Well, hello and welcome to our training video for Extraordinary Ministers of Holy Communion. Uh, as we are looking to uh, re-implement the precious blood, we thought that this would be very, very helpful to all of you, uh, especially if maybe reading the um, the, the bullet points uh, isn't necessarily the most helpful for, helpful thing for you. Maybe looking at that as well as viewing this video could also be helpful for you. You know, as we receive, uh, uh, or as we uh, distribute the body and the blood of Christ. You know, it is so important for us to have the right disposition to do so, to make sure that our heart's in the right place. This is people's human encounter where, again, when you look at them in the eye and say the body of Christ, the blood of Christ, you have to know that you believe in what you are giving to them. And people can see it in your eyes. And so, again, as you distribute, look them in the eye. You know, if you're just like, body of Christ, body of Christ, body of Christ, body of Christ, that doesn't exude much joy. The number of people that I've heard that have said to me, wow, you know, when that, when that uh, communion distributor, when, when, when they distribute to me, I know that they believe in what they are giving me. I know that they are joyful in doing what they do because they give, they give communion with a smile on their face, the body of Christ. You know, again, that makes a huge difference in people's reception of Holy Communion. It doesn't change the fact of what they're receiving. Obviously, they're receiving the body of Christ, even if you're grumpy. But it really does add something. It helps when they know that you are in a right spot. So part of the disposition of this is making sure you're going to confession, making sure your heart's in the good spot, but also making sure that you're dressed appropriately. Now, we also know that there's sometimes we just need somebody, you're in your shorts, and we need a, an extra community distributor. We understand that. But generally speaking, we want you to be dressed nicely. So again, uh, no jeans, no shorts, no, you know, those types of things. Try to be dressed uh, as nicely as you can because that signifies that what you're doing truly is important. And so just a few things as we uh, kind of go over this and we'll go through these things uh, step by step. But first and foremost is to get here in enough time to sign in because the mass coordinator is going to have to be looking for somebody if you don't. So again, please put in a sub for a sub uh, in Ministry Scheduler Pro if you cannot come. And when you get here to the church, either come back into uh, the priest sacristy or out at the welcome desk in the family center and you will find an iPad. Okay, with Ministry Scheduler Pro. And that will have your name on that. And you will simply press your name and press check in. And that will allow the mass coordinator to know if you are here or not. Uh, you really will want to come back here as opposed to just out there because we want you, and on this, uh, this little uh, table, will be a form for you to sign up uh, where you're going to distribute so that you know when you come up, if you're going to the balcony, if you're staying here, all of those things. And so there'll be uh, a little sign-in sheet for each mass, and you just go and you say, okay, I'm gonna be the, the cup distributor on the Sacred Heart side uh, in the balcony, or whatever the case might be. Again, just be mindful of those who might not do steps as well. We wanna make sure that they are staying down on the main level of the church. We have implemented gluten, uh, low gluten hosts, and those are in your patents, and they look like this. This is not consecrated, okay, right now. But again, we found that some people have very serious celiac disease, and so again, uh, to even touch something that is touched. Uh, gluten can be very problematic. And so these have already, uh, the ones that are in your patent have been consecrated. Uh, people will say low gluten, gluten free, and then you will say the body of Christ and you will give this to them. They will then unwrap this, okay? They will receive communion and then they will put the wrapper back in your patent because if there are any particles, we wanna make sure we're disposing of this in the most appropriate way possible. And so we take care of that after mass. A couple of things to be mindful of. If people come forward to receive a blessing, um, they come up like this or they come forward like this, um, only a priest or a deacon can actually say, and may almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you are a lay distributor, you simply can say, 
may Almighty God bless you, okay? You might, if you know them, you could put your hand on their shoulder, okay? But again, you can just simply say, may Almighty God bless you, okay? And that's all you have to say. The same with if there's a child. It's great to acknowledge the child and to say, may Almighty God bless you. Okay, and with a child in particular, you can place your hand on their head or uh, things like that and say, may Almighty God bless you. Okay, and so that is another thing. As I'll go over later, again, please don't use a person's name because if you use somebody's name uh, and then the person behind you, you don't know their name, that's not a, not a great experience for them. And so, again, all of these things to consider uh, as we get into the nitty-gritty of how do we actually distribute Holy Communion. And so here we are, we're ready for the distribution of Holy Communion. And so this is how it is going to look. And we are blessed to have our uh, members of our youth group here to help us, assisted by... Deacon Jacob, okay, so maybe this is some foreshadowing of how this is going to happen, okay? But you have the sign of peace, and then you have the Lamb of God. So we start to sing the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. That is when you all start to line up. And you know where you have signed up before Mass, okay? So you know where you're going. So if, if you have uh, signed up to be a cup distributor. If you are distributing the precious blood, you are on Mary's side. And generally speaking, you uh, there will be four, unless it's the 7 a.m., there's some different things. But the cup ministers go to Mary's side. Those distributing the body of Christ go to Jesus' side. Okay? And when you come up here, there will be little stations, as we have them, with the hand sanitizer. Okay, so we obviously want you to use that, okay, because it's likely that you've coughed or sneezed or touched a pew. And so, again, we would just invite you to come up as you come up during the Lamb of God and just subtly get a little squirt of hand sanitizer, okay? And you will wait here, and everybody's going to kneel. You remain standing, okay? And as you are doing that, the priest and the deacon are up at the altar. And so, it's the fraction right, and I say, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I then consume the body of Christ. I then consume the blood of Christ. And as, as I am receiving the blood of Christ, that is when the extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion come forward. So I receive the precious blood. You are then all in position. It is at that point that I give communion to the deacon. Body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Okay, the deacon holds the priest's chalice. And that is when the priest then goes and distributes to all of the distributors. Okay. Christ, body of Christ, Christ, body of Christ. I continue by distributing to the servers who will be standing here, and then to those who are distributing the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ. At this point, the deacon will begin with the servers, and he will give the precious blood to the servers and to those who are distributing the body of Christ. The priest at this point will begin to give the cup to all of the cupbearers, the blood of Christ. And as I am doing that, the deacon will be giving the patents to those who will be distributing the body of Christ the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. The blood of Christ. So it is at this point, then, that the deacon and the priest will proceed down to the middle aisle. Okay, and the, the deacon will have the ciborium that is from the tabernacle. The priest will have his patent, uh, and we will begin to distribute. You will go to the spot that you have signed up for previously, uh, before Mass, in the priest's sacristy. 
And so that is when we all take our places. And so naturally, the priest and the deacon are in their place. And then for the cup bearers, the cup ministers, you, if you're on the main level, are in the corners, just like Livy and Christine are right now. And so you are in the corner and you are distributing. And again, it is simply, we say the body of Christ, we never use the name. Again, some people say, well, that's more personal. But the problem is, is that when you say the body of Christ to this person and then don't know the next person's name, it's not so personal for them. <laughs> and so again, we always just simply say the body of Christ. Again, people bow and say amen. If you are the cup distributor, then you say the blood of Christ. Okay, again, just like uh, we have always done, the blood of Christ, and that is then when that person receives. To prevent awkwardness or spills, we would ask that you distribute the precious blood this way. I typically will put my index finger in between the purificator like this and kind of hold it like that. And the person receiving the precious blood comes up and bows and you say the blood of Christ. And that person says amen. I'm holding it like this so that the person then can hold it from the bottom and the top. And they take that, you take it back, and then you wipe like that. Again, it's good and important to do both, uh, both sides of the chalice. And again, if you have your finger like this, again, it is simple to do that. If for some reason, uh, somebody spills the precious blood, okay? So there is a spill. You simply take your purificator, okay? And you place it down on the spill, okay? You pad that up there and then leave that there, okay? And then you'll take your uh, cup back to the credence table and just leave this there. That will allow us to know that we need to clean that up better after mass. And here we are upstairs in the balcony. And so this, again, can uh, represent some logistical challenges. However, we have it all figured out, okay? And so what's gonna happen is if you are distributing the body of Christ up here in the balcony, okay? You are first going to take care of uh, anyone from the choir and anyone who is located up here uh, that might be doing the, um, the live streaming or uh, ushering. You also want to be attentive that if you're standing here uh, and, and a musician or a cantor or a dentist needs to go to communion, make sure to take care of them because oftentimes they're doing that in between songs. Uh, so again, they have a limited amount of time, so uh, make sure to take care of them. So just be mindful of your surroundings. What you will do is you will center yourselves here up in the balcony, okay? And you will be up against this back pew. And you will be facing, or well not facing, you'll be back to back facing the side walls. Okay, and what this allows for, if we're all going to communion, I have my wonderful communicants here. So we're coming up and the ushers are going to be or to getting people to come to communion. And so they come here and they receive the body of Christ. Then they go this way, okay? And by being up against the back pew, that gives the opportunity. Then, if you are distributing the blood of Christ, you are back up, there's these, um, uh, there's these bookshelves. You're up against the bookshelves. This allows for a person to receive the blood of Christ. It also allows for people to go back to their pew, okay? And so again, that's kind of how, and that's the loop uh, that we want to create up here. So again, just be mindful of making sure you're up against that back pew. You're in the middle in front of the piano. And if you were distributing the precious blood, you are back uh, up against the pew and right against the bookshelves on either side. 
If you have distributed in the balcony on the Blessed Virgin side, don't forget about the people in the back of the church who are not able to come up to communion. Typically, our ushers are very good with pointing out who that is. But naturally, if you see somebody with a walker or a cane, or typically, they're going to make eye contact with you to help you to know that they need to receive communion. And so these two distributors would take care uh, of the entire back of the church who needs to receive, usually two to four people, uh, and then come back forward. If you are distributing on the Sacred Heart of Jesus side in the balcony, don't forget the good people who are sitting out in our family center. There's usually a few or sometimes more. The exception with this would be the 9 a.m. mass, which tends to have the most people, so we have a separate distributor assigned to the 9 a.m. mass. But every other mass, if you've gone to the balcony, uh, specifically if you're on the Sacred Heart of Jesus side, don't forget to check and make sure that everyone who is seated in the family center also receives Holy Communion. Once the balcony distributors have finished distributing to the family center and to the back of the church, then you'll come forward to help the, uh, the distributors on the main level uh, finish communion here. We tend to have more people down in the uh, main level of the church. So again, this is your opportunity to help the distribution of communion go as smooth as possible. You will see where the balcony uh, distributors who have had the, the body of Christ stand right by these front pews, right on the edge of these front pews. That makes it simple for people to either come forward to the priest or deacon or to veer off, and they'll see you then. If you stand too far off, they don't even see that you're there. If you still have precious blood, uh, you will then stand where, right in the middle of uh, the original person uh, who is way in the corner and the priest or the deacon who is up here distributing the body of Christ. We are now finishing Holy Communion. If you run out of either the precious blood or if you run out of uh, the consecrated host, please take your paten or your chalice and head up uh, and just uh, get out of the way, okay, as we continue to go forward. Uh, and so don't, you don't need to stick around uh, if you don't have uh, anything left. After everybody has received, this is when we are all going to go back up to either the altar or the credence table. The credence table is the table uh, over here on the side. If you had uh, a, uh, a chalice, you're going to go immediately over to the credence table. And once you get to the credence table, that is when you will, if you are able, consume the rest of the precious blood. We are going to do our best to not put too much precious blood in there until we figure out how many people are actually going to receive. If you look at that amount of precious blood and, and simply can't do that, again, just leave that on the credence table and either the priest and or the deacon will be able to consume that. If you had a pact with the consecrated host, we'll ask that you go right to the altar. Place it uh, on the altar and then head back to your pew. And so we have just finished communion and we'll all head back to where we are supposed to go. At this point, uh, the deacon will take care of uh, cleaning up the altar and bringing all of the vessels uh, back over to the altar. He will also help with putting uh, the leftover consecrated host back in the tabernacle. 